something. But the ball is my idea. And Did you get it? <laughs> okay. Actually, what it is, is just a little silver button. A little silver button. And when you press that button, it will play a tune for maybe two or three minutes. I'm going to press the button. Now this is a great gag because you can take it and put it in one of your pockets. And any time in a room just touch yourself like that and it starts music and people say, well, where's that music coming from? But I thought it was more visible with a sponge ball and the sponge ball is moving and you think, well, gee, there must be something in there. Tommy Tucker sells these things. I thought I'd show you. And I got to show you something else, too. Uh, this is not a trick uh, so much as a trick, but it could be. Uh, it's a little fan I picked up in Japan many, many years ago. There were no magic shops in Japan when I was there. Uh, it's a diminishing fan. And they use it to, uh, it's an actual thing that they use over there. Uh, I'll set it up for <laughs> A diminishing fan, Japanese fan. <coughs> no gimmicks in any way. But if I close it up it's like this, and I, I squeeze it, <coughs> get a little bit smaller. We'll squeeze it again. Once more. And look. It's just a little bitty fan. Now, this could be made to disappear. I could just close it like that and it would go up my sleeve. But uh, uh, that's the thing I've been working on. It has a little thing here. Let me show you what it is. It is actually a, a fan that expands or contracts. That's amazing. Look. <coughs> It may have possibilities of magic, I don't know. Yeah. If you put a, a rubber band or a piece of elastic on the end there and uh, have it up your sleeve or in, in here, at the end it would go down, it would be gone. It would be clean. But I thought that was a great idea. Huh? Thought you'd like to see it. Another good trick in a nightclub or any, any place you uh, have people watching is the turban trick. I call this the turban trick because we use a, a piece of cloth. Looks like a Hindu's turban. I think he's still looking for it. I'm going to find the center of that cloth. Right about there. And I'm going to cut. The thing is to tie a knot now, a magic knot. If you've never seen a magic knot before, take a good look at this one. You may never see another. Here is a genuine magic knot. Now I'm going to trim the knot. I'm going to take a small piece from this side. I guess these are left-handed scissors. And a small piece on that side, and I'll take a little piece from the center. Now, here's where the magic comes in. I say the magic words. Gee whiz. <laughs> and look, the whole thing all back together. <laughs> it's a very simple thing. Use your own rope trick, everybody knows the rope trick, country store rope trick, or to use a piece of cloth or a colored ribbon. It gets you away from the rope trick uh, category. Uh, I have a little, a funny little move of this, and it may be of interest to someone. You know you have to make the loop to get up there to cut off. I have a throw. 
Watch this throw now. When I come up this way, I've thrown it underneath, and I now have the loop. If I cut it there, all I'm cutting is a small piece. I'll do it again for you. Hi. You're late. Look, right underneath there, and we got it. Let that hang down. Cut. Now we have two pieces. One on this side and one on that side. Well, you know, actually, what we have is just a little piece sticking through there, because I threw it through, through the center. Tie a knot there. Now, trimming the knot, Cut both ends off, leave the knot in the center, like that, and as the last cut, cut right through the knot, just halfway, and then take the knot and throw it over your shoulder, like that. That leaves you clean, there's nothing there, and you uh, fall back in one piece. Well, they asked me a funny question in one of my lectures. He said, where do you buy turbans? Where do you get caught like that? <laughs> I said, you, you had to make it. Well, how do you make it? Well, you buy three or four yards of a colored cloth. You can get a design cloth or uh, just a solid cloth. It comes 36 inches or 40 inches wide. Take it and uh, make a couple of uh, slits in, in the end of it about one inch slits, as wide as you want it. Then you just simply tear it, the whole thing will tear right down to where you've made the slits. What kind of material is that now? What kind of a what? What kind of material? A cotton. It's got to be cotton. Yeah. Wool will not do it. Silk won't do it. The cotton, yeah. And it comes nice and clean all the way down. Just like nylon. Think about it. Just like like nylon. Oh, is it? Well, can you tear nylon? I, I don't know. No, I'm I don't think so. No. It appears to be nylon. You said oh. cotton, but from oh, oh, does it look like nylon? nylon? No, 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 no. Don't get anything mixed with nylon. Uh, Hundred percent cotton. Yeah. So that's what I'm for. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless you want to cut uh, all the way down four or five yards, and maybe you'll get it straight, maybe you won't. But this is the easiest way to do it, the whole thing. What made the scissors stick to your lapel out? Oh, yes, that's a good question. I have a magnet in my pocket. A magnet, but it is on a piece of plastic. And the piece of plastic keeps the magnet in position. And the piece of uh, the, the plastic here also makes it possible to put a handkerchief in your pocket instead of pushing down in front. The handkerchief comes down there in the pocket, and the magnet is uh, not covered. One thing you have to uh, remember, though, when the magnet is in the pocket, you think it's your top pocket, and you, you try you get to, trying to get it up here. The bottom of your top pocket is down in here. And that's where the magnet is. But you'll find out after a while. It's a very clever thing. And buy a pair of light, uh, lightweight scissors. Here's a funny little thing I found in one of the countries. Big diamond. Isn't that a beauty? Now, does anybody know diamonds? What would you say? How many carats? Three? He knows. He knows. He knows his diamonds. Huh? Five. Fifteen. Now, actually, it is three carrots, you see. One, two, three, and he was right. It's a gag thing. <laughs> I'm kidding. That was on the finger, it won't come off. <laughs> Many years ago, I uh, developed a trick with a thimble. I was just a kid. And uh, Tarbo came to town, I wanted to see him, and, uh, you know, Mr. Tarbo, I'm a magician. He said, yeah, okay. You know, I said, I could show you a trick. He said, uh, okay. I showed him this. Sonny, come on in here. Come in here. <laughs> <laughs> he 
same thing with Thurston many years ago when Thurston was alive. I went to see him. I was bigger then. And uh, I said, I want to show you, Mr. Thurston. I've got something here that's very, very unusual. He said, yeah, yes, sir. What, what is it? And I showed him. Oh, he said, that's good. He said, come here, let's, let's talk. So he took me to his and we talked for a long time. But let me show you what the trick is. It's a thimble penetration, a visible penetration. A handkerchief, you borrow the handkerchief in. Thimble goes back to the center here of the handkerchief. The thimble is right there in the center of the handkerchief. So no trick fools or anything. Now all I have to do is make a funny move like that, and I'm going to make the, the thimble penetrate. Watch. It goes very fast. Oh. Yes. Let me do that again. Center of the handkerchief. It's there. All right, now, watch it go through. You can do it surrounded. Uh, I'll try it again. <laughs> to the center. <laughs> right there. Now look, I'm going to make it go right up through. It's a very simple thing, and let me show you. When I, I put the thimble on my finger, because that's where the thimble belongs, covered with the handkerchief. Now, when it's under the handkerchief, I take the thimble from my finger and put it onto my thumb. It's on my thumb now. It looks the same underneath. I'll show you. I'll put it on the finger, I'll cover it, and by this time, now it's on my thumb. It's on my thumb, but you can't tell the difference. It's on the thumb. All I have to do now is bring my fingers up in front of my thumb, like this. I'll do that under the handkerchief. On the thumb, I bring my fingers up. Now you see the fingers are up there. These my thumb and the thimble free. It's like a V back here now. Like that. <coughs> All I have to do is hit the handkerchief right here, and the thimble is on the outside. You know. <laughs> Watch. It's on the outside now, and all I do is push it up like that, and that's how it looks from the front. Are there any questions on that? Look, I'll, I'll do it. Let's do it with a bigger thimble so you can see it. Here we are. Thimble on the finger goes underneath. It is now on the thumb. The fingers are coming up in front. I hit it there. It didn't straighten up. Here we are there on the thumb. I'm going to hit it now. And watch. Isn't that it? Is this your type of thimble? They didn't see it in the back. They didn't see it in the back. <laughs> Are there any questions on that? I did it one time. I, I did a lecture, and then later on the lecture, I said, I'm going to try, try that with a ball. And I did it with a ball, and I pushed it through. And some guy said, hey, come on. How, how can you do it with a ball? I said, simple. You drill a hole in the ball, put it on the thumb. <laughs> Okay? All right. I see we have a little girl down here. Would you like to help me for a moment, yeah. young lady? Yeah. Well, come on up here so we can see you. All righty. We have a little uh, wand here. Uh, it's a, an arrow, actually. And you see that spot right back there? Do you think you could take that and just kind of point it at the spotlight? Yeah, that, but while you're doing that, make one foot go back and forth like that, all right? And that point right there. Okay, take it like that. Right. Now, you see where it is? Now, make the foot. <laughs> Keep the foot going like this. What's the matter? 
You're having oh. You're ha you're having hey, she did it. She did it. She did it. Hey, that's 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 guy. That's life, isn't it? Yeah, a little girl sitting down there. Uh, how are you feeling? You feeling good? Well, I think you have a problem. I can see it. I can see. Can you see her problem from where? Yeah. She she has a little problem. I tell you what I want you to do. I want you to put your feet together like this, hands down by the side, look straight ahead, and bend your head just a little bit forward. Oh, wait, before, before you do that, uh, let me just uh, wipe this back up here. All right? Now just bend the head forward just, oh, a little bit like that. Are the eyes closed? You feeling all right? I can see, do you know her problem? Her problem is all up in here. And I think I can help you. All right, let's see if we can help you. Right there. I'm just going to grab you. And, oh, look at that. Oh, my God. Did you see that? Did you see that? Keep your head down. Keep your head down. Keep your head down. Oh, my God. Hey, you, you had a lot of trouble. She had a lot of trouble, I think. Okay, thank you. Thank you for helping us. How many of folks out there know what the old prayer vase was? The old stick in the bottle and the rope in the bottle. Uh, that, that was an old thing. A lot of people today uh, don't know what it is. Tommy Winslow had a good routine with it. He had a, a, a whiskey bottle kind of a thing. And uh, he would use a stick. He says within every whiskey, empty whiskey bottle, there was a demon, a spirit. He says, and if you put the stick in there and make that, that guy in there mad, he would sometimes grab that stick and hold on to it, and he wouldn't let go. It's an old thing. Do you know what it is? So, hmm? yeah, a ball. There is a ball, a little ball, inside the bottle. Now when I put the stick in and turn it over, when I take the stick out, the ball is going to jam and it won't let the stick out. To get it out, I have to push the stick in, which releases the ball, and we're clean. You can palm the ball away. Now. But what I wanted to show you I want to know if you understood what the thing was first. But here's something new. I had never seen this before. And I met a young fellow, and he says, uh, I know that thing where you put the stick in. I said, yeah, what is it? He says, little ball. He said, but I can take the ball out and do it. And he, I said, you take the ball out of the bottle, and you can still do this? Yeah, and he says, not only that, but I can do it with a piece of rope. Well, that intrigued me. He showed me. Oh, did I take the ball out? Here's the ball. We'll take the ball out. And a piece of rope. Put the rope in the bottle. Got to get the mad, the spirit mad in there. And then if you take it out, we'll grab the bottle. Simplest thing in the world. Hmm? <coughs> Actually, what I've done, what he told me to do is take a matchstick and stick a matchstick in the rope. <laughs> right at the center. <coughs> when you put it in, you put it in off center like this. Then when it's in there, you straighten out the ends so you can pick up both ends and that uh, expands the thing at the bottom. It grabs the bottle coming up and it sticks. Huh? That's a different uh, angle on it, isn't it? Here's the thing, Al, you probably would like. It's an old, old thing. Do you remember it? 
I bought one from you? Oh, yeah? I had two of them. I wonder where I got the other one. It was from you, huh? Yeah, yeah. You palm this thing, it's a cigar, and you're smoking a cigarette, do a couple of cigarettes. Oops. I don't smoke, so I wouldn't. <coughs> then you take the cigarette and put it in the hand here, right into the cigar. Then when you take it out, the cigar expands, and you come out with a big cigar that is lit. You can smoke it, because you're smoking the cigarette. <laughs> I thought it was a clever thing. It goes right back down in. Are they still available? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. It's simply made, it's just a two. The end of it is just a thimble. Painted a little red around the end of it, it's a thimble. And it looks like ashes. Here's, a, here's a, one of the things we're going to be selling later. And uh, I, oh, I don't know how many years ago I put this thing together. And uh, it, it's a cute little thing. It's called Card to Matches. We have a card. Watch the move. This is, this is a, a, a cute move. All I do is touch the card like this, and it changes to a pack of matches. Look, I can show you both sides. I can even throw the matches out to you. Because the gimmick is here. And you use any, any matches. Any matches will fit right in the gimmick. The gimmick has the card. The, the gimmick is the glue to the back of this card. Fold it. Put the matches in. Open it. We are. But the thing I like is, look, if you just kind of just touch it there, it, it'll, it'll go. It's very fast. Here's the card. Turn it over here, look, matches. Give me. And it's good advertising. If you have your own matches, you throw them out there. Trying to do the trick of the people's matches. We'll be selling those later. <laughs> if you go back in Tanning's catalog, many, many years ago, old back in the in the 40s, you'll see Al Delage's sock trick. It's one of the tricks I invented many years ago. Take a handkerchief, wave it once or twice, and look, you got a nice sock. <laughs> And you need a sock trick to finish an act, you know. Ooh. No? Oh, some of the guys told me what they did. They took one sock off uh, and uh, they changed it, then they'd look here and the, the sock was gone and they'd have it in their hand, you know. But it's the old color changing uh, handkerchief when they put a sock instead of the, another handkerchief in it. It works nicely. There it is, and look, boom. Sock. Here's a funny little thing. Uh, it can be done with a coin or a match. What I like to do with matches, you put it on your knuckles like this, and all of a sudden it jumps up. It, it, it seems like a, a simple thing. You say, oh, he snaps his fingers. Try it. It is what we call the reverse snap. You don't snap your fingers like you're snapping. You snap it up, the finger goes up. Actually, the thumb slips off the end of the finger. Can you see that? Slips off the finger. Not trying to make a noise, just on it off the finger. It works better on the little finger, but it's hard to control it when it's on the little finger. It goes too far. I like it on the center finger there, where it lays there like that, and then it jumps. It's in one of my notes. Okay? Here's a cute little thing with matches. With matches and a cigarette, yes. 
Who's in a